having a company voice and having an authentic company voice can be a real competitive advantage. And I think far too often people just ignore that and kind of do things like, you know, we're excited to announce. Well, everyone's excited to announce when they announce something, right? So say something silly like, it's with great trepidation and yet just a little bit of, you know, delight that we announce or something, you know, interesting and compelling and different. And this is, a, this is another good one for both uh, companies I've started previously and now, um, and now Twitter. Uh, and I call it n no exit. So when I was at Feedburn, I would speak to, you know, I'd go to business schools um, and speak to business school classes of entrepreneurs and I'd talk for a while and at the end of the talk they would, you know, someone would inevitably raise their hand and say, what's your exit strategy? I don't have an exit strategy, I have an entrance strategy. We always thought only about how are we going to try to enter this market and do really well in this market and capture a large portion of this market. Don't maximize short-term revenues. Um, uh, a mistake that I made in one of my first companies was we were headed in a, down a direction and we were very focused and we had a kind of goal we wanted to get to six months down the road and along came a, a, a company that said to us, you know, we'll pay you like $250,000 if you guys do this other thing that wasn't where we were going in six months. And at the time to us, that was just a truckload of money and still is a truckload of money to a lot of entrepreneurs getting started for their first customer. And we said, so we said, great. And then we went over and did this other thing. So what did that end up doing? It distracted us from what we wanted, to, where we really wanted to go. We then ended up having this product that had a customer that was using it for one very specific thing that we couldn't get other customers to use it for. So then when we went back to doing what we wanted to do, we were both three months behind and had a sep another kind of forked product in the market that we had to support for a while, and it leads to suboptimal results, right? Uh, contrary to one that people say frequently, you hear launch early and often. I say launch late to launch often. What, what, what I don't want you to take that as uh, is a, um, we got to wait till it's perfect to launch it. That's not what I mean by that. What I mean is build out an extensible architecture and then iterate very, very quickly on it. Roll new things out, test them. If they don't work, get rid of them, right? The other, the mis the, the, the other mistake you'll make is people will hear launch late to launch off and think we got to wait till this thing is just right and then we'll roll it out. I think that's another big mistake uh, companies will make. You'll frequently see multiple companies in the same market and the one who wins is the one that iterates quickly, and the one who loses is the one that always kind of thinks, okay, it's a year later, and now here's the big version two. And then you, they kind of lob this huge, giant set of changes all at once out into the market, and uh, it, so half of it works, half of it doesn't. Uh, the company that iterates quickly is usually uh, much more successful.